where even there was one museum in North Germany where the people who run the museum, they work seven days a week. From 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock at night. Because there's very little money to be supported from the federal government. So all that they do, they can uh, uh, like, uh, generate funds from renters and selling merchandise. They are extremely committed to see to it that the Grand Museum is a success. And also show, show that they will be shortly. So, but not going into much detail, I just give you a very quick run through of the museum that I've seen. Very minimal 
uh, material has been used as a mark of respect for the, for the, for the cultural loading that goes into the objects. Terrazzo, this is plain old fashioned terrazzo. We go up, get the old cabinets have been used, but with infrared sensors concealed behind these timber panels, timber frames. David Chipperfield again. Uh, this is a statue of uh, Helios, sun god, and it stands just behind one end of the museum. It's a cupola, and it's an oculum to let in light as a gesture because it's the sun god. And the sun god looks towards the other end of the oculum, which I was not you know, allowed to photograph. That is the world famous Nefertiti. So, Nefertiti, being the wife of Akhenaten, who was a worshipper of sun, looks towards Helios. It was uh, designed so that the two positions statue would be such. This is looking with my back to Nefertiti towards Helios. I was not allowed to because Nefertiti being the most prized merchandise is not allowed to be photographed. We went then uh, to the State Historical Museum. This also is a marvelous building outside the school. It is not uh, run by the uh, State Museum of uh, Berlin. This is the federal government. And it also has a new uh, edition by Ian Payne, besides uh, an annex building. It's a wonderful collection. And, uh, missing. Anyway, uh, this is the central courtyard. The uh, annex designed by Ian Payne. Interactive uh, workshop for school children. It's a wonderful place to run you know, the entire term of history. Then the Reichstag also has a museum, and you can have a visit to the Reichstag at night. At 9 o'clock, when the sun still is not down, you can go up and see from the top not only the entire city, but more importantly, uh, the parliament in, in action. <laughs> Then the Bode Museum, at the top of the museum in Zil, is a marvelous uh, museum dedicated in the memory of William Bode to Byzantine art. We were shown around by the directors themselves. And this is the president of uh, the ICOM, Dr. Hintz. We were privileged to have lunch with him and discuss issues and museology around the world. The Pergamon Museum, the statue of Gilgamesh from Sumerian cultures, the Ishtar Gate, they have completely shipped the entire Pergamon Museum to and kept it here, piece by piece. Uh, then the Science Museum I talked about, which is an extension of an old sugar mill. It's a famous Cessna aircraft that landed in Moscow in 1983 by an amateur German pilot. I think he, there was negotiations with two, two countries as to whether he should let it go or not. It's a mistake. Which houses marine with aviation displays a part of the blitz peak, you know, this is the Luftwaffe, Assemble the Luftwaffe. And then the railway museum, uh, which has been relocated. We had also went to a sort of a living museum, which is an old town, in something called a Nicholas Kirchen, the Church of Nicholas, where the entire townscape is preserved as 300 years ago. And then now we travel to Dresden, past the Berlin Wall. Here's the first glimpse of Dresden on the river Galway. It's a magnificent looking city, but again, uh, majorly redone as per the old form. Here is the Indian Miniature Restoration Lab. The Grayson State Art Collection building 
again a beautiful building which houses uh, one of the biggest Turkish Ottoman, Ottoman tents and the Ottoman jewelry and artillery. Grace Megan, as you can see, if this was the condition of the actual state of the wall and, and the structure. I can read up and camouflage magnificent so that people won't be able to understand that the city almost was 40%, 60% damaged by bombs. The actual basic archaeological site, this is the rebuilt square. The hygiene museum, which is again, I don't know very quickly. It's a Bauhaus building, 1920s. The Dresden in, uh, Clock and Precision Instruments Salon. Natural Centre I was talking about. This is the world's only uh, panel on a freshwater lake. So this is actually a freshwater lake. Uh, you know, it's the, the, the uh, animals, it's the fishes. And this is a 10 inch thick acrylic sheet that uh, is a retainer for the, uh, for the, uh, the lakes. That's all. Sorry, we had to rush you. Uh, this requires a very long sitting. Uh, may I just request, uh, may I request Samaji to please come and uh, deliver his. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I've been already asked to hurry up by my friends sitting there. So I will hurry up. Uh, just that I'll just divide my uh, thing into about five, six minutes of speaking notes of what my observations are uh, of the theme that uh, John has asked me to speak on and then a few slides of this center just to illustrate why I, uh, who I feel absolutely is a non-musical person but I have learned some of the tricks hands on uh, by watching people uh, by this particular center makes connection with various people but uh, uh, thank you Victoria Gordon for giving this opportunity and intact. thank you so much just to say that the British Council, the organization that I represent, represent uh, started its work in museum in 2011, basically thinking of exchanges, visits, trainings and all that. And the person who helped us in all this was uh, George Harka, George sitting here. Anything you would get stuck on, he would help us. And I think the direction he gave us, uh, it's what, where we are today. I mean, we do quite limited work, I have to say, we uh, provide speakers, content, exchange, scholarship staff and all that and take uh, people from here to be able to show the various museums. But we are happy we do that and uh, that's uh, maybe thanks to your, uh, the, uh, the direction he gave us in 2011. So, uh, what I wanted to say is that most of, uh, as my previous speaker was saying, most of my thoughts gathered here are uh, visiting the various museums in UK, speaking to a few people. And the difference that I saw, so a uh, few bullet points from what I think is museums and galleries have the capacity to enrich all our lives and the collections lie at the heart of this game. The role of museum collections has been a great opportunity to meet a real cross section of people, uh, both people as an audience, people who are working in the museums, volunteers uh, and to see organizations from different perspectives. Collections, as well as sharing knowledge, I think is a huge opportunity to be creative. And uh, the other observation that I had about why collections make connections is to develop true partnerships. Institutional ownership is no barrier to wider enjoyment and enables public and museum professionals alike to enjoy greater access to collections. Uh, while focusing that resource and expertise is the best possible way. One of the key aims of any museum in the UK that I have been to is to increase engagement with its collections and, and the ideas that are associated with them. 
I think the aspiration uh, is to bring more connections into active public view. Otherwise, they will always land up in dusty old shelves. They take steps to ensure that as much as possible connection is used. They might be through display, through online access, associated knowledge, publication, scholarship, loan, loan which is very important, loan to other museums or non-museums, open storage or study tours. And all these points make these huge connections with the communities. Even those connections that are really intended as a resource for specialist researchers may need uh, real active promotion and to ensure that it's becoming increasingly difficult for them to justify spending public money, caring for public resources. So UK museums recognize this need and that's why more and more collections are coming out in the public. Increasing debate about the long-term sustainability of museums, now the subject of a huge research by Museums Association has recognized this as an urgency. That was a